Okay, we're ready to take this next step in our study of planetary motion. Lots of steps to this plan, but it's worth it in the end. Why? Because we get to see a moment in history of physics that was perhaps the most uh, important, one of the most important moments in physics. So, which was namely the verification of Kepler's laws by the application of Newton's second law, Newton's laws and the universal, uh, his universal law of gravitation. Um, so what we're going to do is try and look at the total mechanical energy in this system, T plus U, and show that it has this form where U effective is this effective potential energy that we derived in the last concept. And then we want to use this to find an energy inequality, and this energy inequality is crucial to our understanding of elliptic, hyperbolic, parabolic, circular orbits, etc. So, we want to look at the total mechanical energy. Um, and that requires T, the kinetic energy. We worked that out in concept 8.4 to be one half m times r dot squared plus r squared phi dot squared. We did a little algebra to, to get that result. And uh, we're going to put that in here. You, we're thinking of as a general spherically symmetric potential. We still haven't specialized to the gravitational potential. Well, L, what does that turn out to be? It's T minus U. That's one half M R dot squared plus R squared phi dot squared. I'm sorry, we're looking for E, not L. And E is T plus V, or T plus U. Okay. Okay, so the total energy, E equals T plus U. I've got T here, and now we're going to add U to that, and that's just this U of R. So that is the total mechanical energy, kinetic plus potential. And we want to try and write it this way, using this effective potential. This effective potential involves the angular momentum, L, that we looked at in concept 8.5. We show that L, the angular momentum, is a constant, and that is the total angular momentum. So what we're going to do now is we're going to solve this one for phi dot. Phi dot is L over mr squared, and we're going to substitute that in here for E. I warned you that substituting it into the Lagrangian isn't legal before you take the partial derivatives. But substituting it into the energy now is legal. One half m r dot squared plus let me distribute the one half m r squared times phi dot squared. And phi dot is going to be L over mr squared. And then we have to square that. Then we add u of r to the end. Well, we did a similar algebra in the last concept. 
But notice what happens here. Uh, it's not quite the same algebra. I've got an L squared in the numerator. I've got a 2 in the denominator. That's this 2 right here. I've got an m in the numerator and two m's in the denominator, leaving one m in the denominator. And what do we have r's for r's? We've got an r squared here and an r squared squared here, leaving r squared in the denominator. All right. But lo and behold, a miracle has happened. This is something that we've seen before. It's the effective potential energy. L squared over 2mr squared plus u of r. So now we've got that the energy is 1 half mr dot squared plus u effective of r. So we've done that one, we got this, and that's the form of the energy. But before I do the second part, I'd like to say a little bit more about this energy. It's pretty cool, because this looks, for all the world, like a kinetic energy. And in fact it is. But it's not the total kinetic energy, as this object... Um, So this object, r and phi, can both change with time. But if r is changing with time and phi is not, that means that we've got motion in the radial direction. Radial, if, if phi isn't changing. So this is really a radial kinetic energy. Kinetic energy really doesn't have components in the radial and phi direction, but it is, the, it is the amount of kinetic energy associated with motion along this line. Now clearly, as phi is changing with time, there's going to be some angular kinetic energy associated with the, the orbit of the planet around the sun. This is just the radial part. And then this is an effective potential energy. And it means that this, this energy for all the world looks like a, an only a radial problem. It looks like we've got radial motion and a potential kinetic plus potential in only the radial direction, but we've included the angular component through L here. And so that's where the angular energy is showing up. It's buried inside of U effective. Well, the last part here is to use this result to find the energy inequality, and this is not hard. We can um, <clears throat> solve this equation for 1 half mr dot squared. So I'm just solving for this term, uh, subtracting u effective over to the left side. Now remember that <clears throat> remember that E is a constant. It is conserved. It's just like L. L is a constant. E is a constant. Total mechanical energy. And what we're trying to show is that E minus U effective of R is greater than or equal to zero. Well, first of all, what about this guy here? 
can he be less than zero? And you say, well, probably not, Dr. Edwards, because one half is positive, mass is positive, unless you've gotten something really weird, and R dot, no matter what R dot is, positive or negative, if you square it, either way you're going to get a positive number. Or zero. R dot could be zero. Uh, and that would be in the case of circular motion. So R is always a constant, so R dot is going to be zero. And there's another important case that we'll talk about in the next couple of concepts, and that is in an elliptical orbit, there's a couple of points, if this is the sun and this is the planet, right here as he's coming out this way, R is increasing. Then you get to this point where he's at the so-called uh, perihelion, and then R starts decreasing. So at this point, r dot equals zero. It's a turning point. And then similar to here, r is decreasing until you get to here, and then r starts increasing again, and r dot is zero um, at the aphelion. Perihelion, oh, I'm sorry, this is the aphelion, A-P-H-E-L-I-O-N. We'll say more about this later. It's the point farthest from, and the perihelion, is the one closest to. The way I remember that is a periscope helps to make things closer, and the perihelion is the one that's close. But anyway, R dot could be zero. Um, R dot could be negative, but one half m r, r dot squared has got to be greater than or equal to zero. Could be zero or positive. If the left side of the equation is greater than or uh, equal to zero, then the right side of the equation had darn well better be greater than or equal to zero or else something really wicked is happening. So that implies that the energy is greater than or equal to the effective potential. And we'll take advantage of this to study uh, different shapes of orbits, of planetary orbits.